Okay, we're ready to start our next part. I showed the pattern uh, when it wasn't complete in the last video. Uh, so here it is, completed. Um, so, again, this is going to be made out of iron. <clears throat> and uh, I picked up a, a box that I had already made, since that's always the easiest. But I'm a little worried because it's going to stand like this in the box and we got about half an inch of sand on either side. Not so much worried about the top, but the bottom. So that's why I put, I'm going to put it on this board and just for safety's sake, I'm going to pack sand around the, the corners. So if the bottom does fail, the iron will be caught. We're gonna go. So this is the bottom, so it doesn't have the risers. But we're gonna strategically p place these on the surfaces that are gonna be machined. So that's gonna be this one and this one. We're gonna do something like that. So I think that's a good spot. Let's just coat this up. Okay, let's uh, pack it full sand. Forgot to drill uh, pilot holes for with the screws. Alright, <clears throat> um, pattern got messed up a little bit when I pulled it out, so I put it back in and tried to repair it the best I can. A little bit of crumble out here, but I should be able to, you know, grind that away. I haven't had much luck in repairing patterns. They usually don't turn out well, so we're going to see how this one turns out. So I'm going to get this one out off camera. This side came out much better. Although still not perfect. Got 
Okay. All right, guys. Um, I just did the pour. I was so in the moment that I forgot <clears throat> to press record, uh, which kind of sucks. But uh, I was posting live on Facebook, so if anything, I'll just snip in the live feed I posted on Facebook. So there's the pour right there. We had enough metal, as you can see, and I made a little sand mold for the uh, on the right for the uh, ingots because you can't use cupcake holders like aluminum because the steel's melting point is too close to iron they just like fuse together so um, one thing I found that made this whole thing way more efficient was I burned the mixture really really lean so well I shouldn't say really two times, but I burned it pretty lean, and uh, you know you want uh, you want to give the fuel as much oxygen as you want to combust, right? And then it just burns way hotter. So normally when I did cast iron the last three times, uh, I've always had to change the fuel tank out. It's never been enough. That fuel tank over there. Let me get to it. The fuel tank over there holds like three gallons, and. Um, never been enough for cast iron because I wasn't burning lean enough and it wasn't getting hot enough so uh, I'm gonna let that cool for a full 24 hours so it cools nice and slow and uh, isn't too work you know hard on me so um, I'll bring you back when uh, I crack the crack the flask open Okay, so next day, <clears throat> almost exactly 24 hours later, and we are going to crack this guy open and see what's inside. Let's get the clamps out of the way. Get the old screwdriver. It looks okay so far. I'm going to finish cleaning it up. I'll bring you back. So here it is. I went in the bandsaw and cut these little heads off. These are going to be tricky. Um, I, I might hand, end up having to just mill these off just because of what I have available to get rid of them. So there's a couple of, you know, casting defects. Like right here we had some crumbling around this rib here. I might be able to mill that away to make it look better. 
Uh, and then here we had a pretty big air pocket that resulted in a pretty big cavity. What's good is that I made this an eighth of an inch too big uh, because I want to machine this down. So most of that's going to go away. That's kind of why I make them so I make the surfaces that need to be machined so much thicker for things like this. Um, not to mention that whatever little bit is left of this will be covered up because this is going against um, the engine and it's not a critical surface. So I'm going to clean this up, all these on the grinder, and then we're going to I'll bring it back uh, when I mill it. So silly me, uh, I can just cut it off with a cutoff wheel. Um, I didn't have any at the time, and then I started going to the mill and I said, whoa, 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 wait a minute. I need to just go out and buy some cutting discs. <laughs> so that's what I did, and uh, now I should easily be able to cut these off. So now I'm just, I could just clean all this up with a grinder. So I'm just <clears throat> getting up in this rib area with the Dremel tool. I kind of did the left side already. Um, I need to just dig out this right side. It's going to take a while, but um, it's going to look better at the end of the day. <clears throat> Alright, I was able to dig that rib out you know a little bit more and carve it out of that so that looks way better when I eventually paint it you won't even know that there was any casting defect okay that's uh... that's gonna be it for this video um... this is kind of the best angle of the casting uh... so you, you can see that uh... we have a little casting defect there I think it'll clean up though because well, we're taking off an eighth of an inch and I was able to save the rib back here pretty much um, so I think this is gonna be okay so next video we're gonna start machining it thanks a lot guys for watching see you later